this is it. This is the final countdown for your championship team. This is the last push. And on today's episode, we're covering the last games. You're not going to want to miss it if you want that hashtag Foot Clan title. Hey, Foot Clan, week 17 almost in the books. And I want to remind you about jointhefoot.com, our fantasy football community, because we are getting into January and you're going to want a little bonus episode of the Fantasy Footballers all year long. Check out the community, get into leagues with one another, and a whole lot of other perks at jointhefoot.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. What a spectacular Friday it is, December 27th. Jason Moore is here. I'm hyped. I'm, I'm full hyped. Full hyped. Max you, hyped. You look like you're trying to start a fire with your hands there. I, I, I could do it. No. If you gave me two sticks. Yeah. A little bit of kindling. Uh-huh, and a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> but if you it, take away the lighter. Yeah. And you said you have five hours. Yeah. To, to start a fire. Mm-hmm. Your life depends on it. I'm a dead man. <laughs> There's no chance. I would get what? a splinter and I mean, quit within five minutes. In theory, like if you went on Survivor, the show, which is still running 30-something seasons in, if you went on that show, what would your, you know, what would you add to the, to the island? What oh. would be the thing that you bring? Well, I would bring the, I would bring because the fun. it's not the fire. No, no, no. The, it, the funk or the fun? Wait, do you bring an item? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying well, what the, attribute look. would you contribute to the society on this island? Human manipulation. That's it. I would I would run the show. So you'd be and playing the relational game. The, yes, one hundred percent, and I would win. All right, uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Unless they do, you see, when you tie, when you go to Survivor and they vote and you tie, it's a fire making challenge. And then I lose. And then you lose. So you just got to win definitively. Twitter at the FF Ballers. Appreciate everybody who listens and supports the show. I've had people write in and they say, "Look, thank you so much. Great season, one titles. How can we help you?" How can I support you? How can I say thank you? A couple different ways you can do that. One is uh, simply subscribing, listening. We're here year-round. Leaving us those reviews. Uh, those of you listening um, on Apple Podcasts, you can subscribe and review over there. On Spotify, you can subscribe. Ad-free on Stitcher Premium. We're over there as well. But you can also support the show at jointhefoot.com, our community. Um, that's where you can get into Foot Clan Leagues for next year. Tons of questions that we've had from the Foot Clan is, look, I'm tired of playing with the same couple people and a bunch of inactives. How do I get into a league, a dynasty league that I actually enjoy? We've got, you know, 10,000 plus Foot Clan members at jointhefoot.com that love playing fantasy football and make it exciting and competitive and fun. And that gets you access to footclanleagues.com if you support us over there. Um, it's been a very, very fun, exciting year. And for, me, for some of you, the reason we're here today is to get you through the rest of the Week 17 matchups and get you that Foot Clan title if you're playing in a Week 17 title game. But it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Congratulations to Anthony Milani. He wins a $55 <laughs> gift card. To shopballers.com. Thank you for supporting the show, Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. What else do we got going on? We got the Foot Clan title shirt at shopballers.com if you want to go celebrate that championship. And a uh, little bit of news I want to touch on at the very top of the show before we get back into the matchups. Tons of the Week 17 matchups we covered on yesterday's episode. Quite beautifully. I, oh. If, I mean. It was one of the best episodes we've ever done. Yeah. yeah. And... Here's the news I got for you at the top. The Josh Jacobs news, There's on his Instagram, he had posted this video. It's actually in his stories about him like he's like at the hospital. Well, he, un he underwent surgery to clear up an infection. So we'll talk about the implications of that situation in week 17. The Raiders still have something to play for. What's up with Terry McLaurin and DJ Moore? 
so they're both in the concussion protocol. Terry McLaurin did not participate in practice yesterday. Usually when someone – so statistically, uh, more often than not, people will miss a week. When they don't miss a week, they get back to practice quickly. They get red-shirted. They progress through the protocol. Now, we don't know for sure – um, you know, with Terry McLaurin that he's not going to play, but just based on how it's it usually goes, right now. I would say he's not going to play. If and then, you were doing in or out today, if, it's if I, out. If I was doing it on both Terry McLaurin and, and DJ Moore, I would say they're not playing this week. So you're super excited about Chris Hogan getting a chance in Carolina. Well, he's going to get a couple terrible targets from Will Greer, and but it, that's not true. I'll bet Christian McCaffrey's throwing that ball. They yeah. just want to get Christian McCaffrey the ball 700 times, get him all the records. He's got some records that he could reach, too. So that he's going to be um, the best fantasy player from week one all the way through to week 17. Genuine question. Yes. Over under 29 touches for Christian McCaffrey. Um, what? I thought you were going to say 200 yards of total offense. And I think he might get there. I I would so take you'll I, take the over. I'm gonna take the. I think he gets 30 touches. That's that's a lot of touches. I don't know if I'd bet on it, but they're gonna try to get him the ball. And why not? They got nothing to play for but his records. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Let's get back into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. All right. Yesterday we covered Bears, Vikings, Falcons, Buccaneers, Dolphins, Patriots, Packers, Lions, Browns, Bengals, Chargers, Chiefs, and Jets, Bills. We had a an exhaustive day yesterday. There's no bye weeks in week 17 except most people's fantasy leagues. Yeah, the the six percent. We're gonna get you your titles this week. Titans at eight and seven take on the Texans at ten and five. Titans are three and a half point favorites. The Texans can technically move up to the three seed with a win, but it's not a big. It, first of all, it's not likely. Kansas City has to lose, and the Texans would have to win this tough matchup with the Titans, and the Titans need to win it to get into the playoffs, which they can do. If they win this game, they're in. Derrick Henry's expected to play. Ryan Tannehill, great matchup. A.J. Brown, you're starting the Titans that you've been starting. Yeah, you you knew last week that this was the only game that mattered for the Titans. They did not need to win last week against the Saints, and yet that team showed up and balled out. They, they didn't beat the Saints, but they competed. They were up for a while. The Titans are looking forward to this game. The reason Derrick Henry didn't Derrick Henry would have done what he had been doing with the hamstring issue, which is be limited but still play uh, last week. Except the game didn't matter. They knew that this game did. Um, I want look the the main three of the Titans: Tannehill, Henry, and AJ Brown. I want all three as absolute must starts this week. No doubt about it. On the other side, I have my own. Reading the situation, reading about the Texans, where they're at. Listen, Will Fuller and uh, Deshaun, Wa Deshaun Watson was limited in practice. Um, Kenny Stills, and uh, he was limited as well. DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller didn't practice on Thursday. This is a team that does have some bumps and bruises and not a lot to play for. So my confidence level is lower than expected for, for this matchup. Deshaun Watson's had some up and downs this year. He might not have all of his weapons available to him. You could take a narrative street of Kenny Stills will have opportunities because Fuller will not be playing and Hopkins is banged up. I'm just choosing to avoid it, honestly. The Titans have a good defense. They're playing for something. Yeah. Uh, so here's an interesting uh, hypothetical quest question that is pretty wild. This game, would you rather play Deshaun Watson or Ryan Tannehill? Yeah, I'd play Tannehill. I would as well. Hands down. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, to, run, look, Deshaun Watson has not been as good when Will Fuller's off the field for fantasy no, purposes. No, statistically, he's been much worse. And so, you know, I don't, I don't think Will Fuller, Will Fuller will be out there. He needs to heal up, get ready for the playoffs. So, yeah, start your Texans, avoid – or start your Titans, avoid most of the Texans. You, you have to start – you know, your Hopkins. Yeah, yeah. There's just not as much on the line, so it brings a little bit more concern. This is one of the, you know, tumultuous situations when you have Week 17 games. It's not always, you know, as, as annoying as it is to not have Lamar Jackson. Like, that's definitive. Like, you know that situation. You can plan ahead. The worst ones are these, where, like, the Texans have a little bit to play for, but not a lot. And I don't think them getting the Titans out of the playoff playoffs is the primary goal for that team. 
They have a bunch of players banged up. So I just would be worried about workload for some of them. But it's all about the options you have on the outside. I mean, I imagine Carlos Hyde's going to be out there. But your expectations are in the middle of the road. Yeah. Redskins, 3-12. and 12. Cowboys, 7-8. and eight. Cowboys, very, very heavy home, 11-point favorites. They could still get into the playoffs. They need help. They need the Eagles to lose. And um, it's not been very good for fantasy options in Dallas. Last week was rough for Dak, for Cooper. But here we are. The season on the line. Ha Amari Cooper back at home, but not healthy, apparently. You know, I think you I think you play Dak with confidence in this game. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Home game. Bad Redskins team. Heavy favorites. No reason to believe he's gonna get sat down. Now he's dealing with the shoulder. Do you have enough concern with the shoulder to say Find another option? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the Phillies secondary last week when I watched that game, they were beatable. The problem is you had a clearly hobbled Amari Cooper and some bad throws from Dak that you, you can't know was that the shoulder or not. But when I put together the pieces of he misses practice all week, the shoulder issue is really concerning to real doctors out there uh, that are, you know, or, you know, pro football doc, Matthew Betts, they're really worried about it. And then he plays poorly. Uh, he's not an obvious start to me. I know Washington is, is not the best, but I look at this 11-point line, and maybe I'm out of my mind because this is such an important game to Dallas. They're going to come in and smash it. But I feel like this would be my almost upset of the week if I had one because 11 points, the Redskins can take the Cowboys, their division rival, out of the playoffs while they've got an injured quarterback, an injured wide receiver one, and they've actually got their best quarterback playing now in Case Keenum. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I probably disagree on that one. But um, I don't know how Case Keenum and Steven Sims win this ballgame against Dallas or compete. Yeah, it definitely doesn't help having Terry McLaurin uh, out if if he is indeed out uh, for the Redskins. But I do think Adrian Peterson is going to keep doing what he has been doing. Which, which is, is get, just be handed the ball? It, it's get the ball plenty, be good enough half the time and would you rather play AP or the Devin Singletary Adrian Peterson okay and then yeah to me I'm, I'm starting my Cowboys um, and I'm avoiding the Redskins outside of the volume play of Adrian Peterson and if Terry McLaurin was active you know that that is a very you know he's not dealing with a leg injury that can crop back up it's am I clearing the protocol and playing with Keenum I'd probably play McLaurin if he was active is there a situation where you play Steven Sims Jr. in a championship week 17 league? Not me personally, no. No, I'm not. You know, yes, he had a big week last week, but I'm not playing him uh, against Dallas. Dallas is seventh against uh, fantasy wide receivers this year. Not a lot of upside to me. How do you order the Dallas wideouts? Cooper, Gallup, and Cobb this week. I would go Gallup, Cooper, Cobb. I'm with you. Colts, 7-8. and eight. Jags, 5-10. and 10. Colts are three-and-a-half point favorites. Two disappointing uh, teams this year, but neither of them playing for anything this week. Colts can get back to 500, however, and Jacksonville can cut another ring, the final ring of the season, and move on because Tom Coughlin's gone, Jalen Ramsey's gone, and this team needs to be reborn. Yeah, they, they, they've got some work to do, and, and they do have some good pieces, um, but goodness, this, team, this is a team that's quit. And, you know, there's been some rumors that Doug Marone is going to come back or that's what's being said. I, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I think this is a, when a team quits on the field, like the, how this seems. I mean, I, you know, it's hard to ever, as an analyst, say someone is quitting because you don't know their heart, their mind. These guys are giving their lives to the sport. But they suck. They've well, they, been they, just they, out the there. Defense. Yes. The, the defense def is what deserves that criticism. More than the offense to me. I don't think Gardner's out there trying to throw a game. He's trying to play as well as he can to establish a role for next year, but it's not working. It looks like every player is making a business decision of, I don't want to get hurt. I'm going to barely try to tackle, which Fournette, is why. Fournette is fine, and Chark, in my opinion, Chark has thresholds to hit in this game. He's not yet at 1,000 yards. He has chance for double-digit touchdowns. He dropped two touchdowns last week, which was super annoying because I liked him last week, but Chark is the one player that I think – I'm willing to roll out there on that side of the ball. 
Yeah, I I would leave it at Fournette. I'm not uh, sure. Chark certainly has a high high ceiling, but he's got a low floor. We've seen over the last half of the season he has not been what we hoped he had leveled up to be uh, in the beginning. Maybe it's because of this injury. I don't know. But the Fournette's great, and the tackling issues of the Jacksonville Jaguars defense is why I love Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack is a player that is is hard enough to tackle with this offensive line pushing guys out of the way already. Uh, we saw it with Devonta Freeman last week, just tearing him up. Uh, I, I I like Mack in this matchup quite a bit. What about the other options on the Colts' offensive side of the ball considering the Jacksonville nope. defense is so atrocious? No one? No, I, I don't think so, man, because T.Y. Hilton has been as bad as it – as it gets if you're in the championship in week 17 it's probably because you've been smart enough to bench him yeah so I, mean, I think you're right I think Mac is the clear play and you can move on from there Eagles at eight and seven take on the Giants at four and eleven the Eagles four and a half point favorites a win claims the NFC East for Carson Wentz and the Eagles my dream oh it's still a lot you will not a stay dream. a lot I mean my um uh, guarantee yeah you I, traveled I could, back from the future where you let everybody know that the Eagles win the, win Super, Bowl. the Super Bowl this year, which seemed... They got to get in the playoffs to win the Super Bowl, everybody was Everybody was doubting you when it looked like the Eagles stink That's and expected. weren't going to make the playoffs, and now clearly... Yeah, and I definitely didn't backtrack on that at all, and that's why I'm so confident they're still going to win the Super Bowl. Okay, but how about this game? <laughs> Let's say they win, yeah, right? Yeah, they yeah. are favored four and a half points by Vegas. Yeah, they're on the road. But this, to me, in a 45.5 point over-under, seems like a game that could be juicier than This that. is a scary game. For somebody who uh, wants to pretend he knows the Eagles are going to win the Super Bowl, this is a terrifying game to me. And this is the kind of game where, hey, Brooks, you, this is where the Eagles lose and your Cowboys lose to the Skins. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's, Sounds about right. That's the narrative out there. Um, and then Jason Garrett is punted off a bridge after the game but the Eagles they're playing for everything here Carson Wentz great start Miles Sanders he's been the hot hand he's had multiple monster weeks and if he didn't slide down last week he would have been the number one uh, number two on the week I'm playing and Peterson has said he's come out and said that he wants to stay with the hot hand that is Miles Sanders so that, with that, Jordan Howard coming back don't worry right I th and I think fantasy owners should uh, continue Miles Sanders has been very good, and so I think fantasy owners need to stick with the with the running back who got you here and play Miles Sanders this week. Fantasy is a funny sport because uh, at the beginning of the year, I had a couple leagues where I took Miles Sanders, a couple where I took David Montgomery. And at the beginning of the year, I just really – why didn't I take David Montgomery? He Preseason looks so good. He's going to have the role. They're a running team. Now I'm like, man, I'm glad I have Miles Sanders yeah. in Dynasty Leagues. It just changes. Ertz didn't practice on Thursday. Dallas Goddard is a great start. So great that Jason made him his start of the week at tight end. And on the other side, there's actual fantasy upside for Daniel Jones and company. The Eagles secondary, 33.4 fantasy points per game given up to wide receivers. Last week, Daniel Jones was electric. Saquon, of course. Sterling Shepard's my start of the week at wide receiver. So while I expect the Eagles to hold on and win this ball game. There's opportunity there, right? There is huge, massive opportunity. Uh, Daniel Jones, uh, he has four times this season, in his rookie season, been a top two quarterback on the week. That's a giant monster week winning performance in a very important matchup against an Eagles with their secondary who's just been beat by everyone other than a shoulderless Dak Prescott. I think Daniel Jones is a very good DFS play. It takes some true gusto to put Daniel Jones out there week seventeen, but I I think that's a I think that's a good move. I I believe Daniel Jones has a has a very good game, and as such, I mean he's got the weapons. Saquon looks healthy; he can do it out of the backfield. Sterling Shepard and Golden Tate and Darius Slayton these are these are legit weapons all coming together at the right time. And uh, yeah, Daniel, you could do worse than Daniel Jones. All right, let's pause for a second here. I want to thank today's sponsor. We're talking about Simply Safe. They have a huge holiday offer, but time is running out. Biggest sale of the year for Simply Safe Home Security, longtime sponsor of the show. If you're looking to protect your home with award winning 24 7 home security, now's the time to do it. We already know burglaries 
they spike around the holiday season. You got family. You know, Jason, you're getting ready to go on a little trip with your family. When you leave town, you need to know your house is secure. But I, but you know what? I'm safe. You're. I'm simply safe. You're simply safe. Um, you got a lot of those expensive gifts at home when you leave this time of year too, and so this holiday offer couldn't come at a better time. Simply Safe gives real-time video confirmation to police as it happens. If there is a break-in, police respond 3.5 times faster with Simply Safe. It's no surprise that Simply Safe won CNET and PC Magazine's Editor Choice Awards, and you can get 25% off plus a free camera at simplysafe.com/footballers. This special holiday offer ends December 31st, so now's your chance. That's simplysafe.com/footballers. For 25% off plus a free camera, simplysafe.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, get ready. Get your get your mouse pointer finger ready for when you win your championships to get over to Fantasy Champs and get you that trophy, that championship belt that you can lord over your enemies. Get get the get the giant one. Get the 56-inch 19-year perpetual trophy. That's unbelievable. And if you haven't been listening or you don't know about the deal that Fantasy Champs is doing, it's unbelievable. You, you might have gone, I want to buy the championship ring instead. Well, don't do that. Buy a trophy, buy a belt, and you will get a championship ring, the $60 Super Bowl-style monstrous gym-filled ring for free with the code free ring. So go get yourself and your league an awesome trophy. They've got the best trophies at Fantasy Champs. Get a belt and then... Add the ring to your cart. You put them all in the cart together. Promo code free ring. It will make that sixty dollar ring price disappear. It's, it's a great offer, and we know from the Foot Clan many of you are taking advantage of it because you need a sweet trophy. All right, Steelers at eight and seven take on the Ravens at thirteen and two. The Steelers they still got a shot. They got to win. They got to get some help. The Ravens they got nothing to play for. So Steelers are favored. The Steelers are favored on the road against a bunch of backups in Baltimore. The interesting thing is, is, you know, do you look at a player like Robert Griffin at all as a streaming option this week? No. Not against the Steelers' D. Not against the Steelers' D. Not without, you know, the, the important offensive weapons playing to their best. I think there's even a chance that you have uh, offensive linemen sitting in this game. No, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, honestly, I was like thinking, oh, Gus Edwards, the time that, you know, Mark Ingram is gone. This isn't the right matchup for that. The Steelers have so much to play for, and their only hope is their defense. It's going to come out here and shut down the Ravens. So I don't think there's a player that I'm willing to play on the Ravens side of the I ball. think you're right there. I think you're absolutely right. On the other side, you know, James Conner's questionable. I, you know, he's he should be O for your fantasy lineup. He, he, yeah, drop him. Use that roster spot on something valuable. That and might you can, feel good, too, based can, on what he's done for you. You can hope. You can be very, uh, you know, just just hope. Tell, Make sure your opponent knows that you dropped James Conner so that maybe if they're dealing with injuries, they can pick him up and play him against you. And then Benny Snell, do you expect him to get the majority of carries in the backfield for the Steelers in this one? I expect him to get uh, a significant amount of carries and no passing work and – uh, Jalen Samuels to get some passing work and no carries. This split load is not something I want with the Duck Hodges led offense. Even though you're going to have backups in Baltimore, it's not like Baltimore is a poor organization and that their backups aren't doing well. Well, it's I more about the recipe for success that you brought up with the Steelers. It's going to be defense and moderation on the offensive side. Duck has shown a propensity for turnovers. The only way that they're going to lose this game against these backups is if he throws three or four interceptions, and they don't have Mason Rudolph to turn to. So the, the recipe is going to be 150 yards. It's How are you so, going to break that up? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's so funny because with, with Duck Hodges, I've been looking, and I'm like, I, I don't think he's a bad quarterback mentally. He just doesn't have the tools. He can't make the throws. that You know, you talk about, oh, this quarterback can make every throw when you're in the scouting season, and you see why because – He'll make the right read, and he throws it. And by the time the ball gets there, 45 minutes later, three defenders are there. And and Tomlin was asked at a press conference. They said, uh, "Do you think it's uh, you know he's making the wrong reads, or do you think it's a physical tools? You know what's the oh, issue?" Oh no, what do you say? Tomlin goes, "Does it matter?" <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, he's not like, happy. It doesn't. It doesn't matter which one it is. The, the dude's sucking. 
Yeah, yeah, it's disappointing. Raiders at seven and eight take on the Broncos. Broncos at home. They're six and nine. They're playing all right, though, at six and nine. Raiders can make the playoffs. They got to win and they got to get help. But the help they need, it's possible. And here you are looking at a team with something to play for, something on the line. Darren Waller, you can play him this week. One more time before the season ends. Yeah, got to get it in now. Tyrell Williams. Any confidence in Tyrell and this offense? I mean, the Broncos' defense is just a good defense. They're at home in Denver. There's question marks throughout. I don't know. Vegas sees Denver winning this game. My and I, I do too. My confidence in Tyrell Williams is coming back. He was dealing with a foot I issue that has been hard for him, and he's looked better the last few weeks, but it would have taken a good matchup for me to say, okay, it's swung all the way to play. The fact that you're in Denver mile high against the Broncos and their great defense that you know is not necessarily – playing for anything but they haven't been and they've been playing well well and they're playing for momentum with drew lock and what they have with him in the future you know finishing the year strong whether you have a, a quarterback here that's going to take you into um the next handful of years they they need to prove that they need to see that they're at home they're the raiders are a beatable defense i think Cortland sutton is a fine play philip Lindsay started the week at running back this week how do you feel about noah fant not great. You know, no offense had a couple uh, breakout games where you can see the talent. You see why he was drafted so high. And, and, you know, I think his future is very bright. Here's the here's what you can get. Two for 56, two weeks ago against the Chiefs. Okay, you got a big play. You got a big 43-yard gain by Nova Fant. Mm -hmm. Last week, two for 10 against the Lions. Yeah, I had that. You had that one in your dynasty league. How'd that serve you? Uh, well, it served me just fine. I won the championship. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. My other options didn't do much better than that. So, uh, Josh know. Jacobs is the big story in this game. Is he going to play? He had surgery on Wednesday to clear up an infection. And it was said that that is not going to get in the way. Uh, it's not going to change his availability. <laughs> when I heard that, I was like, I was not going to change it because he was already out. <laughs> like, the way that I, you know, we, we don't know. This is one you're going to obviously have to keep an eye on for sure. But if he didn't play last week and then is having a cleanup procedure, I, I have to be at least very prepared uh, for him to not play this week. Yeah, Ian Rappaport said it is a superficial skin infection that he was treated for. Um, if he's active, is he in your lineup? in yeah. this matchup because the game's that important. Yeah, I think the game the game is very important, and Josh Jacobs himself is awesome. He's been phenomenal for his rookie season. It's pretty much a two-man race between uh, Jacobs and Kyler Murray for the offensive rookie of the year. I don't know if uh, A.J. Brown is, is starting to Entering. turn heads at the, at the end of the conversation, but yeah, I mean, uh, if Josh Jacobs is active, I play him, and if he's not... You play DeAndre Washington. I play DeAndre Washington. It's not that this is a great matchup, but the Raiders utilize their running back. DeAndre Washington has had two opportunities without Josh Jacobs to be the guy. He's been good in both of them for fantasy. Yeah, he's gotten into the end zone in both of them and had a very strong week on the ground last week, so you're not wrong. Cardinals at 5-9-1 take on the Rams. Rams at 8-7, and seven, eliminated from the playoffs. A couple of the headlines in this game, Rams are seven-point favorites. Um, you know, there's, there's a report. That makes it sound like Sean McVay is considering resting some players. Um, that could especially affect guys like Jared Goff, Todd Gurley. We also know Jalen Ramsey will be out in this game. That means maybe there's some hope for the Christian Kirk's owners of the world. Do you have enough confidence in Kirk after last week's super disappointing performance? Another week of, uh, you know, getting ready to get out there. No Ramsey. You have any confidence in him? Nope. Okay. I do not. Um, we don't know for sure that it's going to be Kyler Murray, but what we do know is that Jalen Ramsey did not play last week against uh, Christian Kirk either, and Christian Kirk was not good. He's dealing with you know, his own significant injuries coming back, and so he doesn't look right. I don't know that I trust 
any of the weapons. If you're going to pick one from the Cardinals, it would be Larry Fitzgerald, I think, over Christian Kirk, just based on the last several games. It's almost like, and you know I know Larry has the there. He's leading the team in receiving yards because of all the time Kirk has missed. I I believe it because these last few weeks, Larry's just been awesome, and it feel I I know the the vibe being here in Arizona is most people expect him to come back. But the way he's been playing, and I think that's why people expect it, makes me wonder, like, is he playing for the, the – giving everything he's got at the end of his career? Because that's, that's kind of how it feels. Nope. He's back. <laughs> All right. I hope you're right. I hope I'm right too. But um, based on the reports that you've seen, I mean, when you've got the Rams at home heavily favored, high over under, generally you're looking you know, at this matchup and saying, okay, well, I'm going to put Gurley out there. I'm going to put Cup and Woods out there. Cardinals defense has been better in recent weeks. This stinks. This, this is, I mean, you said it earlier. The Lamar Jackson situation is the one that's going to be talked about as the week 17. Oh, you got here with Lamar and you don't have him. That's fine. It's yeah, at the, least you know you can go grab a Brady or a because here's, somebody. Because here's what you're doing. Here's what I would do. Here's what I would recommend. Play Todd Gurley. Yeah, that's a, what else can you say? I play play Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. And I don't know how to not do that, but if Todd Gurley goes out there and plays for a half, and they're wanting to see what they have in Daryl Henderson. This is not our fault, Jason. This is not our fault. Yeah. I mean, I, but if this was my lineup, I would play Todd Gurley. You're at home, huge favorite against the beatable defense. But if Daryl Henderson plays half the game because they want to see what they got, I, I won't be shocked. If you're scared and you have other good options, then that's when you pivot. So there are some players out there that will be able to pivot. But most people, you know, you're in week 17 and Gurley's been great. And here's the crazy thing is Gurley's been good over the last few games solely on the basis of touchdowns. Yeah. Like, he's just constantly getting that goal line work. That could happen again. I think Kenyon Drake's the most definitive start of this entire matchup between both teams. Crazy. Right? I mean, he's going to play and play the whole game. Yeah. And he's playing for a lot. Of money. Yeah. He <laughs> is. I mean, this is pretty much everything – it's all this, on the line. He's I mean, this a free is a agent. Same, this is the same situation Brooks and Al are in. They're both playing through right. week 17 for hopes of a contract next We're year. We're trying to see how the video editing goes today, whether yeah. we bring back one. Brooks both. is sitting up in his chair a little bit more than, than Al yeah. is. Now Al's oh, sitting up. Uh, yeah. I think that was a reaction to the comment. Yeah. But I both of them, Brooks who knows? Is in, Brooks is in the lead. Who knows if they're back next year? Yeah, we'll see. Really? We'll see. Restricted free agents. Um Please don't steal them from us. So you play Cup, Wood, Woods, and Gurley. <laughs> Cup, Whoop. And and Goff, I guess, is a is – uh, Goff, at least, you – see, like, Goff is a great play matchup-wise. Everything's perfect. He's at home. But because of the nebulous situation where you're not sure how long into the game, if they're going to rest him or not, he is at least easy to pivot off of. Yes. And because you can go to waivers and find a million quarterbacks that you can play this week. If I'm a w in a week 17 title game, which I'm not, if I'm in one, I'm trying to eliminate doubt and risk. So I'm trying to find situations when I ha when the pivot option is there to eliminate risk and doubt, I'm going to make it. So you would if play If the gap is too large, then I have to stick with what I've had. All right, let me give you some hypotheticals. Please don't. <laughs> Jer <laughs> this one should be easy. I'm going to start with the low-hanging fruit. Jared Goff or Tom Brady? Your yes, I'll, I'll go with Tom Brady. Jared Goff or Daniel Jones? I will play Daniel Jones. Okay. And Jared Goff or – let me see. If you're going to play Daniel Jones, Jared Goff or <laughs> – You're trying to find somebody I'm trying far to enough away? Or Jimmy Garoppolo, playing for a lot, but against Seattle hasn't been great lately. Uh, I'll play Jimmy G. So you just know, Jared Goff's off your board then. I think he is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and, then, um, and what sucks is he could be great this week. Like Goff, if I knew Goff was playing the whole game, I'd play Goff over literally every single person I just mentioned. I'd play yeah. him over Brady. I'd play him over. This is a this is a really good matchup. Yeah, it's a Brady. it's a messy matchup. And so state, you know, I will say this: you got to keep, you know, if you're in this this championship game go and Google for articles from these writers and see if there's new quotes on Saturday, Sunday morning, get every piece of information. We'll you be can get. retweeting anything of, of great relevance yeah. at the FF ballers on Twitter. 
Um, just stay tuned because things can change quickly. Sunday night football, the 49ers at 12 and three take on the Seattle Seahawks sitting at 11 and four. 49ers are three and a half point road favorites in this one. Uh, if Seattle was to win this game, uh, that would give them the top spot in the NFC West. It would knock San Francisco down into that fifth seed. But the 49ers could end up the top seed in the NFC with a win or they, end up in the wild card weekend. So this is a as big of a swing as you can get. And the 49ers on the road are favored by three and a half points. And I think the reason is because... It's the Chris Carson factor in the injuries, don't you think? Uh, I, I think it's just because they're the better team. I think with Chris Carson, the 49ers have been better this year they've they've played really tough yeah but if the if the seahawks had won last week they'd have the same record and they'd have chris car it, i to me i'm surprised i'm surprised that the seahawks at home where you know just last week they were atop the division i'm surprised that they're underdogs when here. you when you beat the saints at the superdome and you come down to the last minute with the baltimore ravens i think you get a lot more credit for not just your wins and losses but what they've looked like you know the Seahawks yeah it, they... Andy's almost upset of the week you believe in Russ I do and I believe in unfortunately I believe in Pete Carroll and bounce back performances at home with everything on the line so three and a half points that's too much for me but what does that translate to for fantasy Russell Wilson at home, I don't want to play him against San Francisco. Not the way he's played. Not the way he's finished for fantasy owners. No, not my championship game. I would. you got to be kidding me. He, uh, you remember a couple weeks ago when you I, made You weren't Ma playing him last week against Arizona, were you? you? You made Matt Ryan the start of the week a couple weeks ago against the 49ers when they seemed like this great defense, and you pointed out that – their secondary hasn't been great. He was a top 10 quarterback. Yeah, but Russell's not doing it against bad matchups in but, good situations. But now having lost the running game. That that would be the bet. The, the bet would be he, it's all on Russ. I just if, – if you think Seattle has a chance – He might have to chance, be the running game. If you think Seattle has a chance to win this game, and obviously with three-and-a-half-point underdog almost upset of the week – Yeah, but it, to it's, me it's 16-13. You know, it's something – it's a dirty, hard-fought home win. Well, the good news is there's no question here that every single player is playing. The given everything you got. Yeah, no, the, everything's on the line in this one. So for me, if I'm picking a running back on Seattle, that I'm willing to start. Like I'm willing to flex Travis Homer. Yeah, Travis Homer would be the guy. I can't, I can't stink and wait to watch Marshawn. I want. Do you think he'll even be active for game day? Dude, you got to give him a ball. You gotta get you got oh yeah the crowd he might be worth being active for one snap just for the crowd just get him down near that goal line and bring him in if it, let me just say if 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 Marshawn Lynch is active and they give him the ball and somehow after this absence he goes beast mode <laughs> for some kind of huge run like I will just lose it as a as an NFL fan like that will be the greatest moment stories will be told unbelievable because off the street to doing that like I don't know if he will he probably won't but Homer's the one I'm willing to to flex play um the volume eight should targets go. last week yeah. six catches against Arizona the volume should go to Travis Homer you've got Marshawn Lynch and Robert Turbin off the street as the only other active running backs they've got to get acclimated which is why I I, I expect them to be active and get a few carries, but you know nothing, nothing big. You're not going to be playing those guys when uh, Pete Carroll's come out and talked about leaning on Travis Homer at running back. Um, the other side of the field, the running back is you know the position that the 49ers have relied on to great success, specifically with Raheem Mostert, who has been uh, very good over the second half of the year. What's your confidence in Mostert in this matchup? Playing. Playing him, yeah, running back two confidence. So I, I put Mostert out there. He got back into the end zone again last week. So, yeah, everything's on the line. Since it's, a, he, it's a good running team. Since he basically became the, the starter from week 12 for Mostert, he is the running back seven, having finishes as a top 12, number four, number four, and then the last two weeks, 26 to 23. They haven't been that high ceiling you've been hoping for. 
But if that's the floor is like, you know, running back 25, then you can play him with confidence, and he obviously has the upside. Do you have any confidence to play a Tevin Coleman or Brita? No. Nope. But okay. I like that everything's on the line, like when you asked the Goff versus Garoppolo question. Um, Lockett and Metcalf disappointed last week. You got Sanders and Debo. Both of these receiving cores have had their good weeks and their bad weeks in recent um, history. Confidence levels across those four. Maybe put those four in order this week. The the uh, the four, I would – are you saying on both sides of the field? Yeah, if you just put those four guys in order. Oh, gosh, what do you do with Tyler Lockett? It's like Tyler Lockett should should be the the number one, and I'm not sure that he is since he's been bad more often than he's been great. I guess I, I'm going to go Debo, number one. Debo is so much better than Emmanuel Sanders over the past five weeks as a whole that I'm going to have more confidence there. That's so, all, at the top of the four-pack? Yeah. Oh, okay. I would go Debo. What about that? What about that Russell Wilson play? Lockett, Metcalf, Sanders. Well, the reason that I that I say that is because while Lockett, I feel like should be the number one, and if Russ has a big game, Lockett will have a big game. His range of outcomes is so wide. Lately, he has been goosed. He's been irrelevant. You know, wide receiver eighty eight, or you know, it's just it's not been great for Lockett. So he is more of a wild card. That's why I would rather start Samuel than Lockett just from a volume standpoint. Lockett, Samuel gets involved with the screen games, gets handoffs. He's just more utilized. All right, George Kittle, obviously you are playing George Kittle. And then Jacob Hollister, I think he has an opportunity uh, at home. You talked about the dependency on some other options with no Chris Carson, no pro size, no penny. They're losing all their running backs. And if it's on Russell Wilson's arm, Hollister against San Francisco, I don't mind it. I think he's a, um, a stream-worthy candidate at the tight end position. I think he could have a very big game in this one. Shall we move on to Ballers on a Budget? Let's do it. Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. I'm going to go with Travis Homer. He's 5,900 on FanDuel. Like I said, eight targets, six catches against Arizona. Pete Carroll's come out and said they're going to lean on Travis Homer, not something you normally hear about a rookie, unless everybody else around you has fallen by the wayside. Getting Robert Turbin and Marshawn Lynch up to speed on a short week with a lot on the line, I don't think they're going to put a whole lot on Marshawn Lynch. I don't think Homer looked bad last week, to be honest with you, and the volume should be there. And at fifty nine hundred, he's a bargain at, at running back. If if this were you know one of those opportunities for price, I think Travis Homer is a great pick. I do worry, you know, when you're out there trying to win a tournament, the upside. Like, does Travis Homer against the Niners have the upside to be a really strong play? That's my worry. But I kind of have the same worry with my pick, which is for the first time I think this year is a defense. The Pittsburgh Steelers, who are awesome on defense, are priced at a point where it looks like they're going up against the most difficult matchup in the Baltimore Ravens. Except they ain't. They're going up against the Baltimore Ravens backups. They're going up against 2019 version of Robert Griffin III. The, the, I don't see how Baltimore does much with their backups against this Steelers defense that is playing for their playoff life. And th look, here's the teams that are cheaper than the Steelers. The Bengals, Giants, Chargers, Jets, and Redskins. That's it. And they're a, they're a top five real world NFL defense. So I don't, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily think like, you know, if you're going for a high end, huge scoring defense, I don't know that this is, I think that Baltimore is going to be conservative. They're going to run the ball a lot. It's going to be a low scoring game. You know, versus playing against Jameis where you've got the chance to run two touchdowns back. But at the same time... I think RG3 gives you some of that. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. But I, I like them. And I want to throw out another name. Because I asked I'll you... I'll allow the, it. Thank you. I asked the question earlier, Week 17 Championship, would you be willing to play Steven Sims Jr.? And, and we both kind of agreed, probably not. But, you know, th that's because you've been playing for an entire... Do you have his price? 
season. Uh, I did have it pulled up. Let me. Hmm. I think it's six thousand. He's very cheap um, comparatively to some of these other guys. But you're mentioning him because you have you like the potential upside in this matchup. Yeah, he is. Uh, I mean, he's always been a very cheap option because who is Steven Sims? Uh, but if Terry McLaurin is gone, and now you have Case Keenum coming in as the quarterback. And if you just look, the last three games, I mean, Steven Sims has had seven targets, 11 targets, 10 targets, three touchdowns in the last two games, and now you get a quarterback upgrade, which that quarterback upgrade worked well with him this last week. He's not a guy I'd rely on for my championship roster, but if I'm making a tournament... The Cowboys I, are just so good on defense. Are they? Yeah. Okay. They are. Against wide receivers, they're the sixth best in the league. The past couple of weeks, you know. Well, I'm Philadelphia just his, couldn't do anything I'm against throwing them. his name out there. If you're All looking right. for a cheap wide receiver to build, your, I think you're. I, like I think you're a Sims chaser. I, I think you're a Sims chaser. Maybe, but yeah. I like I like putting my money into the high end run. <laughs> like here, here's my ballers on a budget pick. Ready, Christian McCaffrey. He's the most expensive player out there. He's going to have over 400 touches this week. But he's going to have 400 touches. I mean, like I'm. I want to pay up for those guys that I just. I already know I get two players in one roster spot and you know th those monstrous performances and in order to be able to pay for someone like Christian McCaffrey you need some of those cheap options you need a a Sims or a Steelers or maybe a homer yeah see this is the one time you can be a homer and mm. it's okay it's okay don't miss your chance to win an all expenses paid trip to Arizona come hang out with us get in on the week 17 leaderboard series at fanduel.com slash ballers you, you want to answer a couple weeks 17 mailbag questions jason sure let's do it mailbag mailbag you've you've had many worse than I that think, that was okay i think uh, so i don't want to like toot my own horn because it wasn't great no but i think that was the best i've ever done i think that was that was measured it was fine the best that was the I've finest ever th done it and it wasn't finest. great and it wasn't good. Correct. But it was the best. It was the best that you've done. Thank All you. right. We've got um, an interesting, fun 2020 keeper question. Pick two. Nate in Jacksonville wants to know, I have Austin Eckler, Devin Singletary, Joe Mixon, Miles Sanders. Which two do I keep for 2020? Mm. Joe Mixon's locked. Yeah. I mean, if this this looks like it doesn't have any draft capital cost, he's 100% he's locked. And then you have to decide, though, you know, you, you mentioned uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Um, Miles Sanders and Devin Singletary would be, like, on the short list beyond Kyler Murray and Josh Jacobs. Who do you like more as a keeper for next year? Is it Singletary or Miles Sanders? It's Singletary. I think this is a team that wants to run the ball and wants to have a star running back in Buffalo. Whereas, you know, on the, uh, you know, the other side for the Eagles – they want Carson Wentz to be the MVP of their team. They just haven't had any wide receivers be able to stay healthy, and they want to have a committee backfield. So while Miles Sanders is very talented, I would take Singletary here. Um, and Austin Eckler, the only way he would be in consideration, even though he's been great this year with Melvin Gordon, there is the situation where Melvin Gordon leaves and Austin Eckler is signed and he becomes... Yeah, Justin Jackson, other compliments there potentially with him. I think all four guys, I'll say this, I think they're all pretty good keepers for next year. Yeah, my two would be Mixon and Singletary. Yeah, I'd lean that way as well. All right, Kenyon Drake question from Oliver in Houston. How high would you take Kenyon Drake in a dynasty startup draft asking for a friend? I would almost not take – I mean, like, there's – just about no situation. He's going to go higher than I would take him. Uh, Kenyon Drake has had a couple good games now, and I am a Kenyon Drake truther. I think he is probably resigned by the Cardinals and has another good year. But he's a running back, and in a startup dr dynasty draft, the only running backs I take near the top are those really young stud running backs. Uh, historically speaking, running backs peak, not to say that they aren't still good after this, but their peak is is age 24, which is younger than I think most of us think of when we think, uh, you know, when when do guys peak? Kenyon Drake is peaking later because he had, didn't have the opportunity. Um, but Yeah, but how about David Montgomery or Kenyon Drake in a dynasty? Who would you rather have? Di Kenyon Drake's 25. 
But if he comes back to Arizona, which is not a foregone conclusion, I mean, yeah. we don't know what's going to happen there. He seems like a great fit, and it seems like they want to move on from David Johnson, and it'll be Drake and Edmonds. I would take I would take Drake over David Montgomery. Yeah, that's that's the question. I mean, I know so that's a three year gap difference between Montgomery and Drake, but Drake will be really good for the next two years, um, and so. But the the point here is, I think he's going to go in. You know the top four rounds if he's re-signed in Arizona, and I'm going to be grabbing wide receivers there. All right, we want to thank our studio sponsor, as always, Pristine Auction, a Todd Gurley signed jersey, $55. PristineAuction.com, use the registration code BALLERS. That'll do it for us today. Thank you for tuning in, listening. Good luck in your Week 17 title games. Brooks, Jeremy, good luck on holding on to these positions for another year. I think you did a good job today. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. All right, Foot Clan, time is running out on Simply Safe's huge holiday offer. It's their biggest sale of the year. They have everything you need to protect your home and family like a smart lock video doorbell for your front door, an army of sensors that guard every room in your home. You can get 25% off plus a free camera at simplysafe.com slash footballers. This sale ends December 31st, so go today to simplysafe.com slash footballers.